joining me today. I thought it was time to switch up my makeup routine just a little bit since we're headed into fall. And so I bought a few things on Nordstrom's that I really wanted to try out on their website. And then I also have, and I will be trying for the first time, the flick stick that is from Amazon, I believe. So, uh, or you can purchase it on Amazon. So, not sure these will be for me, but you never know till you try, right? So, in addition, I brought a, um, forgot one thing that I wanted, but I brought a, um, concealer back here with me. I'm in my back bathroom. And some eye primer and a little sample of NARS, um, blush. So, those, in addition to some brushes, should work for me. Now, there was a brush I just want to get, and apparently I left it up front. So, uh, we'll just see if I can make do without it. And let me tell you about the things that I've already done and the things that are here to try. So, or I guess I'll tell you about those as we go through. But I have already washed my face and put on my skincare and my r and I think it's called, um, sunscreen. So I've already got all my prep work done. So I will talk you through everything that I purchased and I've already prepped my skin for the day, got my sunscreen on. So um, I have been wearing Forever Skin Glow for almost a whole bottle, bottle now. Uh, so a couple of months, maybe I don't know how long that lasts. But I do think that I probably would be happier with something that wasn't as dewy looking just because I do have enlarged pores and as you know sometimes with dewy sorts of finishes it makes your pores just seem even larger or more noticeable. So I'm going to try today the Dior Forever and I believe this one will not have that dewy finish. And when I put it on I have been using this Dior brush, which I'm always, you know, using. I love it. So I thought I would try to do half my face with it today and then use just a beauty blender for the other half to see if it made any difference. I don't think it will. Now in the Skin Glow, I've been using the 0.5 Neutral and I've been really happy with it. So I went ahead and got the 0.5 Neutral in this one. It is hard to tell in the bottles this is a frosted bottle and the one that is not the skin glow. But as you can tell, it does look like a difference in color. So just to say it's the same brand, same color. We'll see if it actually is the same color. And this will be my first time, I think, putting makeup on back here. So I have a Ricky Ricky. A mirror which probably needs charging <laughs> as is the way. Thankfully I have my charger handy. So I don't know that I've ever really made a conscious effort to change my makeup for fall. came with this mirror and it does not want to go in. Okay, that is kind of odd. <laughs> Definitely has 
has an issue with the plug. Of course, the Ricky Ricky mirrors, if you haven't seen them, they're the kind that have the little magnetized, <laughs> sorry about that, magnetized um, magnifying mirror. That's kind of hard to say. And then the lights all around it, so you probably can see that glow. So, yeah. Okay, so starting with the uh, Dior Forever, I'm the weirdo that does not wear primer so it is what it is and let's see if you can Ooh, this is very uh thin in comparison to in comparison to the other one so it is a different color has a lot more yellow in it than the other one let me see if i can put the other one next to it well Definitely thinner. Uh, the one on the top is what I've been using, the Skin Glow, and the one below is the um, Forever. So, anyway, let me get rid of the Skin Glow. I have noticed with the Skin Glow that just a little went a long way, and so I hadn't had to use much with this brush. They say just start with uh, the nose area. So, don't you know? And then work your way out. Kind of feel like it's a floor buff, which is not a good analogy. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I had said I was going to do half my face with the brush and half with the blender. Well, that I did not do, so. always have to, since I have big pores, I have to be real careful on the side of my nose that everything is even. And I gotta tell you, I'm really pretty much liking the finish on this. It is a much more matte without really looking like it's drying. I kind of like to tamp because when you use anything, a brush, a beauty blender, whatever, if you don't kind of like pat it out, you could have uh, streaks in it, so. Okay. <laughs> and I had noticed earlier I had something in my teeth, so sorry. But this, really is pretty and the color isn't bad i do have like an enlarged pore here and up here and i cannot stand them so that is what is um bugging me but it is no fault of the makeup so i don't know if you can see but i love it so Following that, I've been using the Lancome Tint Adol Ultra Wear in 090 as my concealer. And I have found that a little of that goes a very long way. So, I need that much of it and I'm using a um, BK Beauty Angie from Hot and Flashy uh, concealer brush. One morning when we were in Florida I went out real early and 
I guess because it was so early, I totally forgot to put my anything on my face. So I got a little bit of um, dark spots on that side, but I'm confident they will go away if I am diligent about my skincare and putting on sunblock. And with this concealer, especially around the eyes, it's also very thin to me. And so it, a little to me, seems to go a long way just because when you have eye wrinkles, you sure don't want anything building up in said wrinkles. So that is it. Uh, like I said, I do like the color and I do, I don't mind the thin texture on the Forever Dior. Transfer Proof 24 Hour Foundation High Perfection Concentrated Floral Skin Care hmm, with Sunscreen. Broad Spectrum uh, SPF 15. So, and my husband had called real quick, so while uh, I was talking to him, I did go ahead and put on my eye primer because eyes are a place where my makeup moves a lot. So I do use a primer there because I have to. So this is the Hourglass Fail Eye Primer. Can't see it today. Okay, so for a new, another new item, I got this Airbrush Flawless Finish Complexion Perfecting Micro Powder. I wonder if it's good for, for an all over perfecting finish. Hmm, well I am going to use it as a setting powder made in Italy. I am using One Fair Pale, <laughs> and I love it on the side. Give a woman the right makeup and she can conquer the world. Amen, sister. So, this is beautiful. I have seen it uh, around and people tend to swear by it. What do I usually put my powder on with? Oh, I put it on with this. So I'm just gonna take a little bit. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't seem to be, um, what's it called, flaking? <laughs> really bad. Okay, well, let's see what we think. Oh, it kind of almost, hmm. Maybe I've got the wrong color. It almost looks to me like it's changing the color of the foundation. And I kind of like the color of the foundation. Now, I have been going all over with my <laughs> powder just because A, I like to use it as a setting powder and so I feel like it gives the um, blush and bronzer and that sort of thing a place something to adhere to, so I don't know if that's going to work. Hmm. Hmm. We'll see. I'm not going to judge just yet. Uh, a lot of people talk about how pretty the packaging is. I, it, it's powder. I'm not going to get too excited. Uh, yet. So, okay. Hmm. What did I bring? Oh, I think this might be the powder brush from BK Beauty. Just gonna... If you get too much powder on your face as a girl, since we have like little blonde hairs on our face, then it can actually powder that hair and that, that kind of looks weird. Okay, I am not real good with anything cream, so I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I wanted to give it a go. This is the Charlotte Tilbury in Pretty Packaging, the Beautiful Skin Sun-Kissed Glow Bronzer. 
and I have it in one fair pale. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. And as I've mentioned before, I think all of these items came from Nordstrom. If there's something, the only thing that did not are the flip sticks for the eyes. So this is what it looks like. I always like to see if anything smells and it looks beautiful. So it is supposedly a cream. And you know, they say for um, us mature gals, we should not go like way down on our cheekbone with our bronzer because it kind of pulls your face down and makes you look older. Wow. You know what's funny? In the camera and in the mirror that's a little bit further, I'm actually able to read how much I have of this on better than I can with an up close mirror. So just letting you know that might help you. Again, as we get older, we lose our jawline. So this can be a good way to help def define your jawline. My saggy area is right here and on the other side. And they say on that part, go up a little bit more on your face. So it cuts that sag so that it looks like it's an even jawline as opposed to what it really is, which isn't even. So I hope that helps you a little bit and then little bit so it looks sun-kissed on your forehead. So I don't know. I am pretty much um, mild with the um, bronzer, but I kind of like that one and I don't think I got too much or too little, but you can be the judge on that. Okay, I did not get a new blush. So I'm just going to give this little NARS a use and again, I'm using uh, BK Beauty and this one, the gray handles are the Angie by Hot and Flashy and the burgundy flandles, flan, handles are the BK. So this is the one that is so popular from NARS called Orgasm. You probably cannot read that, but and again, if you'll go up your face, it's supposed to be less aging and even very light application on your apples. Uh, the apples of your cheek, more like right here. Uh, mine naturally have color in them. If yours don't, then you might want to use a little bit there, but they're actually saying what's better for us old gals is to put our highlighter there because that will uh, give some more roundness to your face. Some of the, um, what would be the word? Some of the I don't want to say texture because I'm not talking about outer texture, but some of the dimension that we have in our face when we're younger, we tend to lose as we age. So that would be why you might want to create a little contour there. So that is a pretty light application. I am not one to put too much on just because I'm not Dolly Parton. I'm not going to need to do a stage concert anytime soon. So that is all I'm going to do right now because I'm fine to get into eyes. And I don't, I bought two. I should have bought blush instead of two of these, but I have been wanting to try the Dior uh, five colors couture and I got 669 which is soft cashmere and I think it is beautiful colors so see what you think of that hopefully I can get some good use out of that I will tell you I have the Dior it has like nine pans in it. I don't know what it's called. It's more of a purple color, but I can put all of these things down um, below for you. But one of the little pans is a eye primer and it is the best for traveling because 
It has all colors you would use. It has the eye primer in it. So as long as I have it and my brushes, I am good to go. So this is one option for today. And then my other option is, oh, let me show you real quick on that before I forget. So the outside of the box looks like this. And it does have a couple of little brushes that comes with it. I'm not going to use those. So the other thing is the Too Faced Natural Eyes and I guess a Neutral Eyeshadow Palette. There is no specific color to it, but it, they always do such pretty packaging. Look how that looks. It's up. It's just big and wavy. It feels like a uh, evening purse closure with a little heart and this one I probably wouldn't want to travel with just because of the weight. It's magnetic and it doesn't want to open for me. There we go. However, these are beautiful, beautiful colors. So they, it would be a nice one to travel with. And the thing about Too Faced that I like, which is so weird, I love the way their stuff smells. And this one, I don't know, kind of smells sweet and a little bit of chocolate, but not, not just chocolate. Very vanilla, floral, really good. And some of these colors look like they will be beautiful. Cashmere Bunny on that top middle. Oh, that's so pretty. And I also think on the left middle, that is Silk Teddy. That's a beautiful color. So, hmm. I think we will start with Dior. And I like to try to camouflage the hooded eye, which is a little lovely to think about. I start with an all over color, but preferably not white and preferably not something that is, um, what's to call it? Mm, pearlescent. Yeah, that would be the word. So these are both pearlescent. So I am going to go over here and start with this one right here. Even though it's close to white, it isn't white. It's called Heaven. Oh, and it's so pretty. The little floral impressions they've put in there. Okay. So I like to put an all over. And the reason I like to do that, oh, and the other thing I like to do is to come below my eye. I feel like it, with my all over, I feel like it brightens my eye. I use it also again kind of as a setting powder, but the reason I like to do all over is because I have a lot of veins that show through my eyes, so I feel like if I uh, put the all over, that's going to be one more layer to help cover the veining and hopefully help it not show through. So I've done that with a light kind of skin tone color. Now I'm going to go back in and you're supposed to pick, I'm going to switch back to Dior. You're supposed to pick if you're doing the hooded eye makeup, one of the more medium shades that you're going to kind of put up, up here. So I'm going to start with this one right here, which looks beautiful. I'm not sure if they have color names on these, but no. So it is not flaking very much at all. I am using again the Angie Hot and Flashy. It is the A504 and that last brush, brush I used was also an Angie Hot and Flashy and it was the A501. Down. Do not, again, <laughs> with the hooded eye, and if you have, like, my wrinkles go downward, you don't want to go past this spot. So as you're kind of doing that windshield wiper motion, just keep that in mind. 
And actually, I like these brushes, the BK Beauty and the ones by Angie, but I think I have a much better brush that I probably will start using. I've had them for a while now. That sounded weird, for a while. For a while now. You know what? I think I was supposed to be using a 502 for that little part of it. But what I like about it is um, they're shaped a little bit more like a paintbrush. And so it's real easy to get in there and do your windshield wiper in those creases. So again, you have to look at yourself far away and up close to make sure you're doing the right thing. I actually love that color. It's kind of like a grayish color, a little bit gray, a little bit beige. I don't know. I may have put it on just a little bit too dark. So I'm going to take this one, 503. I feel like, what was his name? Painting with Bob. What was Bob's name? I feel like that's what I'm doing. Making a few little trees, <laughs> depending on the brush you use. Okay. Um, Back to business. So then I'm going to take this color in the center that says Dior, which is also quite pretty, and kind of put it in the center and blend up. It really, this does look awfully dark already. I'm uh, going to take the darkest color. So I didn't do very much of that because I don't want to just create a big, heavy, dark eye. Um, what I do like that I can see is that they are all colors. So I think what I'm learning with this palette is palette is that it's going to be one that I want to work in other colors with just because it is so dark. And I'm sorry, if y'all see me looking up, I'm looking at the camera to see how all these colors are working or not on the camera. So just a little bit of the dark. I'm going to dust a little off. And with this one, if you put a little in the crease and then kind of come down and put on your lash line, it kind of helps to define your eye. And same thing on the other side. Oops, don't want to get too much. Okay, again, I'm going to blend, so hopefully that has created upwardness <laughs> with my eyes. Uh, if you feel like you've got some going past the no-fly zone, you can take your original brush that you use, the 501 or whatever you use for your all over, and just with a upward motion kind of clean up that area. So I have very see-through skin over here in addition to down here above. So lucky me. Okay. Then the last thing I want to do to create some, um, kind of make it look like my eye, this part of my eye is a little more round. And dimensional. I'm going to take just a hair of the um, the color up here, the darker the two shimmer shades, and put it in the middle. And then again, just put that out, um, even that out a little bit. So that that is my eye. Now I will tell you this. That concealer is not my favorite. As you can tell, I do still have a lot of discoloration below. I'm, I'm not sure that I'm seeing it as bad on camera, but trust me, it is there. But when you wear too much dark that is the same tones as whatever you have going on below your eye, it can make it look like one big black eye. So I have to be real careful of that. So anyway, um, this this is how it is going to look today. Thankfully, um, it's not a work day, so I'm not going to be wearing it. Okay, so if we're game, 
I will try these, the flick sticks. So one is for the left eye, one is for the right eye. They are black and they are um, two, two ended. So on one end, you get the little defining pin and on the other end, you get the little stamp. So let me show you that is what a stamp looks like. It looks like a little bird has been here. So I have in my hand the right wing, this being my right eye. So I'm going to let's see how I can do this. I'm gonna, so you put it right, okay, right at the base of your eye. Um <laughs> I did not flick it up as high as a girl my age should, so that will have to come off. But let me try the left wing to see if I can do a better job, and I'm not going to get close, so you'll just have to pretend you can see. Okay, I actually want to flick as if extending my bottom on up to my eyebrow, so... Better, however, the <laughs> don't know why I feel I have to when I do that, but uh, it is better. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think this is good for my wrinkles. It kind of. Well, first of all, it's mixing with the um, tears in my eyes, and it seems to be making black little holes <laughs> in the corner, kind of like a, you know, how you have morning in here. Well, I've got, I guess, black day down here, and I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and stick with that, you know, when you're in for a pound. So... You're supposed to extend that little stamp on as your eyeliner. One other thing I have heard is you can take like a tiny little brush like this, which is actually a brow brush, and kind of smudge on it. Okay. The flick is not for me. I will keep practicing. Did much better on this eye, but this eye is a mess. So I'm not sure. I don't have anything back here to take it off with. Hmm. Strangely, in a bathroom that I thought I would be, oh, uh, I did just find this. The brush that I love, it's called Your Backstage Face Brush. So that is this one if you're looking for it. And they do have it on Nordstrom also. I <laughs> found a Q-tip. So now I need something kind of creamy. This is supposed to relieve <laughs> Yonka, the dark circles. So let's see if it's creamy enough to remove my errant wing. Yeah, it seems to be taking off the one on my hand. It's kind of made a <laughs> blob. I don't think I'm a wing girl. You know, I don't, I'm gonna be, it'll be interesting to see with regular makeup remover what this is like at night to take off because it doesn't really want to come off from what I'm feeling. 
Uh, the box looks like this. As I said, I got it on Amazon. The flick, oh, it's waterproof, smudge proof, and life proof. So, hey, it's going to be with me for a while, I'm thinking. Okay, so let's see if I can, ooh, cover it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm coordinated enough for this. It uh, is all below my eye. <laughs> I tried pulling it up. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm just making bad, actually, worse. Every attempt to remove it is just putting it elsewhere on my eye. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going <laughs> to pretend that's not there. <laughs> the only thing I can say is at least I haven't got it as a mustache on my face yet. Okay, how bad is that? I did not bring any mascara back here with me. Apparently, I didn't bring much of anything back here with me. Other than my new products I wanted to share with you. Yeah, this stuff is not wanting to come off. But, that's a good thing. If you put a stamp of eyeliner on, you sure don't want it to come off midday. But there are two more things that I bought that I wanted to show you, just in case you're interested. This I have been wearing already, and I am in love. It is MAC Frost Lipstick in the color Angel 302. And I don't know if you can see it, but I love it. It is one of those lipsticks, obviously. I like to wear a Mary Kay primer every day. I've just done that for years, and it works really well. It's consistent, good price, lasts a long time. I keep one in my makeup drawer. I keep one in my purse, and now I probably need to bring one back here. But, so if I was going to work, I would definitely put that on first. But this is the kind of lipstick that all you have to do is just put it on. I'll, uh, lip liner's fine, gloss over it's fine, gloss in the middle's fine, trying to make your lips look bigger, all of that's fine, but if you don't have time, if you just want a lipstick in your purse, this is the one. And I love the color. I just think that's the prettiest, most basic color. Now, if I wanted to make it darker for fall, I could add a darker lip liner. Of course, I didn't bring one of those back here, so I won't be doing that. But, I'm not even sure what I have back here. I've got stuff in drawers, but I don't know what stuff I have in these drawers. aromatherapy actually it smells kind of fallish so I put it on it is deep relax Ooh, nice okay well one last thing I bought I have been seeing this for probably a year or two now it is that Dior nail glow and it is instant French manicure effect whitening nail care so anyway I thought it was real pretty uh, I have gel nails on right now. Gel nail? Or no, I have the dip nails on. So, I haven't put this on anything, but I did put it on a chip in my toe. Just one layer made it look clear, but I feel like if I put a couple on, it's going to give that pink color. So, other than my flick stick fail, 
I hope you liked my makeup today and maybe you found some new products that you might enjoy. If you have any that you have discovered that you're really enjoying right now for the fall, please list them below in comments. I'll put links for a list of all these products below for you. And thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you back next week. Bye.